Hello everyone, welcome back to Petroleum Downstream Crash Course and today we're going to talk about soaker vis breaking. In our last video, we were talking about coil vis breakers. These are basically, I mean, these are the most simplistic forms of vis breaking. Okay? And uh, yeah, uh, we went through how they work, the principles how they work. But today we uh, want to talk a little more about uh, something called the soaker vis breaker. Now, what is a soaker vis breaker? Well, we've seen in our last video, let's just recap what a coil vis breaker is and then see how a soaker vis breaker actually differs from a coil vis breaker. Okay? Now, firstly, we have vacuum residue feed. It is being pumped by a pump here. You preheat the thing and you mix some steam with it, maybe about 9% volume uh, steam per volume, uh, what do you call it? Per, per volume of oil or 9% weight of steam per uh, weight of oil is a ratio then you have like 12 uh, parallel tubes inside this heater it's a furnace so that's uh, you, know, you can imagine like 12 parallel tubes inside the furnace that are being heated and that's where the cracking is going on then it will be flowing into a cooler of course a cooler where the reaction is quenched so that the cracking stops. Now, of course, you have a pressure indicator here so that uh, you can monitor the pressure. Then here is where, you know, the higher pressure is partially relieved so that the uh, product can actually be separated in a separation vessel. So in this case, it is a drum, but we can also have it uh, in a distillation column because, of course, I mean, the uh, the idea be behind it is the same. You must separate out your products into the various streams before you can further process them. So perhaps at the top you have the lighter ends out and at the bottom you have the heavier ends out. And sometimes of course you can put it in a storage drum. And you can discharge, discharge it later to be blended into your fuel, uh, fuel oil as and when you need. Now this is the original the vis breaker patent i think one of the originals they call it us it's a patent number us 147 we call it the art of treating oils okay so that's basically a coil vis breaker now the thing about coil vis breakers is that you cannot raise the temperature too high in this furnace okay because what happens is that if you raise the temperature too high the Oil inside, or the vis broke, uh, the re vacuum residue that you actually want to vis break, it can overcrack, and when it overcracks, it starts forming this thing called coke. Now, just to bring the cooking analogy back, you can imagine like you know you have cooking oil, and suddenly now you overcook that cooking oil, you heat it up too much. Uh, what forms? Firstly, you'll have a lot of smoke coming out. You have oil that's too hot. You have smoke coming out. And then you have a little black carbon residue that's at the back. That's coke. That's what happens when you crack it too much. So the thing about this breaking is that you have to uh, so-called crack the oil just right. So that the right uh, mixture of products come out. But if you want that, if you want to control the temperature, even within here, it is difficult. And what's more, um, since you can't raise the temperature too high in this furnace, then the amount of conversion you can achieve will be limited. All right. So you want high temperatures, but you don't want it too high also. And the thing is that you want control. So how do we achieve this? Now, if we take our cooking analogy again into uh, consideration, Let's say you are having a pan of eggs that you want to cook. And in this case, scrambled eggs. Now, I like to use Gordon Ramsay's, uh, or rather the, the example of Gordon Ramsay's scrambled eggs because it's good. It is a very apt way of telling us what this breaking is about. So let's say you have your egg mixture here and you don't want to overcook your scrambled eggs. What does Gordon Ramsay do? He says, take it off the heat. And in fact, after you take it off the heat, 
The pen is still hot. This is a hot pen. And you know, and, and you're stirring your eggs with your ladle and everything. I'm sorry, just draw a ladle down there. And then you stir it around. So you're stirring that ladle around, you're trying to get the eggs not overcooking, but you just want them scrambled enough. As in, scrambled and cooking to uh, just nice. And you don't want it to burn. So you take it off the heat, you stir it around, let the eggs cook in the hot pan because of the residual heat in the hot pan, and that will let it cook. And you can do a similar thing, you can do a similar thing with with a vis breaker. So in this case, you're heating up your oil, but you want it, you want the oil to crack under its own heat. So what they have is this thing called soaking drum. So I can heat it up to about 410 to 450 degrees C and of course there'll be the pump behind and the whole pressure and everything. So after that you put it into a soaking drum and what happens in, what happens in the soaking drum? More cracking occurs and when more cracking occurs uh, your rate of conversion is higher or rather your percentage conversion is higher it will increase and per conversion uh, less coke is formed so less coke is formed and higher conversion you want that and that is generally a good thing okay it's a very good thing now for this there are two uh, advantages I mean there's an advantage and disadvantage of using a soaker for the advantage you can keep the soaker vis breaker up and running for about 6 to 24 months before cleaning okay maybe a bit longer but it depends because the amount of coke that you form in the soaking drum is a lot less due to the above mentioned reasons where you don't over crack the oil However, sometimes uh, people find it that soaking drums are harder to clean. Harder to clean as compared to the coil. So you know, yeah, it's either that kind of a give or take situation. Okay? So uh, that's, that's basically what you get in a vis rig. Now, of course, this diagram, yeah, what, what does it mean to be uh, having a soaker in this diagram? You probably put your soaker at around here, just before the cooler. Because the cooler, what the cooler does, the cooler does is, what the cooler does is to quench the reaction, to stop all the, so uh, all the vis breaking that's occurring, <laughs> so as to prevent the overcracking. Okay? So basically, that's just what the Soaker Fist Breaker is about. And now I want to tell you more about some further reading that you can take a look at for the Fist Breaker. Okay, so this is the original uh, pattern I was talking about, US 147A, 102A. It's called the Art of Treating Oils, and um, this was one of the earliest, you can look at the date here, one of the earliest uh, Fist Breaker patterns. And uh, you can view the PDF here. And what you'll notice is that there's absolutely no diagrams. See, this diagram is not being scanned properly. Um, so, uh, what you've actually seen in the video was a sketch of uh, the diagram based on, you know, based on uh, the process that's being described in this patent. You see all these numbers here? From cooler, blah, 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 it goes to blah, 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 blah. So basically by reading that, I give you a brief sketch of the diagram. Okay, you can go and read it more uh, over here. You can look at this, uh, uh, this number. I can, I'm leaving the uh, links in the description so you can take a better look. And just uh, I was saying before that, you know, you don't always have to use a, uh, a flash drum to separate your your face breaker or this breaking residue in this patent um, they've actually integrated the this breaking process 
uh, this breaking of VD screw. Oh, in this case, there's vacuum residue into the uh, vac uh, distillation, crude distillation unit. So here you can see one of the diagrams here. Now let me go through it with you. I've already pasted the diagram here. So you can see that uh, we originally have our crude oil from the atmospheric tower. Okay, so these are the various fractions talked about earlier. And this is the atmospheric reduced crude, aka long residue. And it goes into the vacuum tower, also talked about earlier. Okay, so in this, we have uh, all the reflux systems and everything here. Uh, over here, you can see that where my cursor is at. Okay, my cursor is here talking about the. Uh, not talking. Pointing you. Excuse me. Pointing you to the various uh, reflux systems for the vacuum gas holes and everything. And then, and then what happens? This is a short residue. They call it vacuum reduced crude. Let's zoom in here. Virgin vacuum reduced crude. And what did they do with that? They sent it into the this breaking heater. You can see number 32. This breaking heater. And they'll separate. They'll separate it out into the furnace oil and lighter. And there'll be some uh, quench oil to, you know, uh, hmm. I can't remember what it is for, but never mind. Uh, basically, the idea is that uh, the heavy stuff, the vis, bre uh, vis broken residue containing the gas oil, uh, will be flowing up here into some heat exchanger, back into this uh, vacuum tower. Okay? Vacuum tower. You can see that? This is the bottom of the vacuum tower. So that, you know, part, a part of this, uh, the lighter part of this vis broken residue will be vaporized. It will be vaporized into this vacuum tower to be extracted here in the vacuum gas oil sections. And the heavier ones, which are the vis broken residue, okay, that will go through here to be taken out. Alternatively, alternatively, you can recycle some of that back into the oops sorry back into the vis breaking heater here so that you can convert more of the vis breaking oil one more time so here here you can see that um, we have uh, two ways of separating it one using a, a separator using some quench oil uh, and that's over here and you recycle it back into the vacuum tower. I mean, this is just one way you can do this breaking. Depending on the cost, you can choose to arrange it this way. Cause this uh, by Gough Oil Corp, Gough Oil Corp, uh, by Miller James N. Mr. Miller James N. Okay, one last thing I want to show you before we end this video is take a look at this uh, paper. It's very good for further reading. Again, the link is in the description. It's called This Breaking, A Technology of the Past and Future. Now, most uh, scientific papers are, you know, you have to pay a certain amount of money, usually about $35 to download them. But this is, thankfully, uh, thanks to Sheriff University of Technology, it is open access and it's under a Creative Commons license, meaning to say it's free for you to read. So you can come and visit this and this will tell you a lot more about this breaking. Okay, so here's the abstract. Uh, so they'll tell you about this breaking, how the process works over here, the this breaking process. Okay, and then you can read and read. Ah, and this is a very simplified, very simplified diagram of a soaker vis break, uh, soaker vis breaker. And then you have your quench oil over here. Okay, and yeah, they'll tell you lots about how it works. Yeah, okay, go and read more about it. All right. So that's all about all I have for you. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this lesson and you found it useful. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. And I'll share it with your friends if you find it useful for learning about fist breaking. Okay, wish you a good day. Cheers. Bye.